There are truly hundreds of tips online about how to get more done, how to get more out of your days, how to be more efficient, how to get more done with less time. In this video, I want to talk about how to have less stuff to do in the first place. In this video, I will be sharing nine ways to create more time in your life. Onto the tips. Firstly, cultivate quality leisure time. A 2013 study showed that working parents, truly the most time poor group of people that you can come across, found that when they had leisure time, when they had spare time, they were either bored or they were stressed. And this might be a phenomenon that you've noticed in your life as well. You might reach a public holiday, you wanted a day off for so long, and then it comes around and you're like, I don't really know what to do. Even though you're constantly thinking about how much you love some free time, when you actually get it, you don't use it well. If you aren't cultivating your free time, you will always feel like you don't have enough time. You won't feel rested and you won't feel restored because you aren't resting and you aren't restoring. So UCLA's School of Management Research studied 400 working Americans. The participants were either told to treat the weekend like a vacation or they were told to treat their weekend like an average weekend. They controlled how much money was spent and they found that the people who were told to treat their weekend like it was a vacation enjoyed their weekend far more than the the people who were just told to treat their weekend like an average weekend. Researchers suggest to make the most out of your quality time, sketch out what it's going to look like, or if you're a type A person, plan it out in detail. But keep in mind that overscheduling and creating time pressure in your free time can suck the enjoyment out of it. If you're not a planner, aim for rough plans, like on Sunday morning I'm going to go to the beach, or on Saturday I'm going to aim for a sunset and a coffee. Researchers have also unsurprisingly found that free time that's spent on active activities like exercising, or connecting or even volunteering tends to be much more fulfilling than free time that's spent on passive activities like Netflix. There are times when passive activities make the most sense, but in general, an afternoon spent on TikTok and Netflix doing passive activities isn't going to be as enjoyable as an afternoon spent connecting with friends and doing a Skillshare watercolor class in the park. Skillshare is the sponsor of today's video. Skillshare is a really great way to make the most out of your leisure time. If you're someone who enjoys doing creative things or enjoys learning, you will love Skillshare as a platform. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes for creatives. You can explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity on Skillshare. I recently launched a new class on Skillshare called Design Habits That Last. It's a comprehensive guide on how to change your habits, but it's not just teaching you information. You actually pick a habit and you create a full-blown habit plan guided by the videos in the class. You'll learn how to find a habit that'll have the biggest impact on your life, build a habit that is flexible, easy to maintain and design your habit in a way that feels rewarding and feels easy. But there are so many things that you can learn to do on Skillshare. You can learn watercolor, you can learn photography, you can practice your journaling skills. There are also a few productivity classes from people like Ali Abdal and Thomas Frank. They're releasing new premium classes all of the time. A Skillshare class that I use when I wanted to use my leisure time in the best possible way was doing a watercolor class with my sister Amy. I painted this watermelon and I also have the class designing the life that you want which is the perfect class to be doing around New Year's. Actually, both of these classes together are so perfect to be doing together around New Year's. Do them like one after the other. Oof. That is a high quality use of your leisure time. Particularly the anti-vision exercise within Design the Life that you want is incredibly impactful. Skillshare are releasing new premium classes all of the time and it's curated for learning. So there are zero advertisements. Skillshare offers membership with meaning. With so much to explore and real projects to create and the support of fellow creatives, Skillshare empowers you to accomplish real growth. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click on the link in the description down below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so that you can start exploring your creativity today. Click the link in my description below to get your one month free trial. The second tip to creating more time in your life is to have an overwhelm routine. We are our own worst enemies. When we are busy, when we are overwhelmed, we take on more tasks. Studies show that when we do this, we're taking on small, easy to complete tasks because they help us to feel more in control when we're in a state of overwhelm and that's when we need control the most. So you might notice that when you're coming close to a deadline, you feel this urge to clean your fridge. Or when you have five projects on your plate instead of your usual three, you get this urge to finally call and get the window of your car fixed. That is not you practicing self-care as much as it might feel like it in the moment. It is in fact you practicing self-sabotage. And often it's not the actual tasks on your plate that are overwhelming you. 
It's how you feel about the tasks. You probably feel confused or frantic or a little bit panicked. The cycle goes, get busy, panic, do tasks that don't really matter in the moment, panic more because you haven't done the original tasks. And it continues. To combat this panic cycle, create an overwhelm routine and make sure that it's somewhere obvious that you can access with ease. A good overwhelm routine will probably include taking a breath, doing a brain dump, deleting, delegating, and prioritizing. Tip number three is to find your enough number and to find your ideal number. If you're in a position where you make enough money to cover your daily bills, your regular expenses, to save a little bit of money for the future, and to enjoy your weekends, you're incredibly privileged and there's not too much more that money can do for your happiness. It's been shown over and over again that millionaires are only a tiny bit happier than the regular person, but we continue to prioritize money over time. We get stuck in this endless cycle for more and you see this a lot when you follow the entrepreneur space. People aim for 10k months and then they're aiming for 20k months and then all they need is 100k months and they're constantly leveling up when it comes to their income. And in some cases that is really intentional and it's very thoughtful and aligned with that person but in some cases it begs the question what is it all for? Which is the name of the podcast that inspired this tip. To remove this endless cycle for more sit down and create an enough number. This is the number that covers the bills, regular expenses, savings and fun weekends. Then you can figure out your ideal number. This is the number that that lets you spend on those extras that you want in your life for whatever reason that align with your values. Set your goal to reach your ideal number by all means, but as soon as you start feeling a need for more after you've hit your ideal, question yourself. In most cases, the more money you earn, the more stress you inherit and the less time that you have. If you aim to earn more money, get really intentional about making sure that you will also have the right amount of time. Valuing time over money consistently shows greater happiness. Tip number four is to create an aversion to busy culture. I was speaking to a girl recently who was telling me about how her managers and her colleagues would always email outside of working hours at ridiculous hours of the day, often on weekends. And that is something that I've done from time to time. I am not a saint, but when I was working in the corporate world, I can remember feeling embarrassed because I was like, I don't want to email outside of working hours because it makes me look like I'm not managing my time very well. And when I mentioned that she was really surprised and she was like, I've never thought of it that way. But that is the beauty of an aversion to busy culture. Granted, some people are very, very busy. Some people are overworked and they need more resourcing, but a lot of people just email outside of working hours to look very, very busy. Start to intentionally carve out a mindset that has an aversion to busy culture, an aversion to a lack of boundaries at work. When someone's emailing constantly out of working hours, we shouldn't be impressed, we should be worried. When someone is constantly working two hours of overtime, we should not be impressed, we should be worried. The next tip to creating more time in your life is to create filtering questions for your goals and the projects that you take on. Greg McEwen writes in Essentialism, Essentialists see trade-offs as an inherent part of life, not an inherently negative part of life. Instead of asking, what do I have to give up? They ask, what do I want to go big on? People who value their time and who are intentional about creating white space in their life have filtering questions that help them to prioritize what to take on and what to not take on. On the screen are some examples of questions that you might ask when you come across a new opportunity. Things like, what problems do I want? Am I the best person to be doing this? If it isn't a clear, ongoing yes, it's a no. The next step is to create clear and strong cutoff times and deadlines and then back them up with boundaries. White space isn't white space if you have constant temptations or reminders about work. And for some people who have a lot of social obligations, the same applies to getting constant reminders about messages that you need to respond to. If it's taking over your time outside of work, it might actually be taking away from your ability to restore. Boundaries aren't just telling yourself that you won't answer emails past five, it's also deleting the email app on your phone past five. Your free time is precious, treat it like it's precious. The next tip is to prioritize maximizers. People who value their time prioritize tasks and activities that get them more time. Maximizers. Tasks like creating templates, procedures, checklists, focusing on hiring, all fall into this category. If setting up an FAQ page will save you hours of time answering customer queries, prioritize that over over responding to the customer queries. If setting up a template for content creation will save you time thinking of ideas every single week,
week, prioritize setting up a content template. The next tip is to delegate. If you have the means, if you have the means to delegate, do it. If you don't have the means to delegate, see if you can ask for help. Be careful with this because you don't want to delegate the things that you actually enjoy. If you really enjoy cooking, delegating cooking isn't going to make your life better. If you're someone who gets a lot of satisfaction out of cleaning, don't delegate your cleaning. But if you despise laundry, by all means, ask your partner to take ownership of that task. Or if you have the means, hire someone to do it. The next tip is to 80-20 your tasks. On a piece of paper, brainstorm the things that you spend the most time on. Of those tasks, highlight the things that get the biggest outcomes for you. So the things that create the most time, the most money, and the most energy in your life. Then make it your mission to delegate or reduce what's left. Keep in mind, these figures might be more like 70-30, it might be more like 90-10, but regardless, there's gonna be some kind of split. If you are on a journey to create more time in your life, two videos that I think might help are, firstly, how to stop wasting your time. This is all about reducing the time wasters in your life, which is something I didn't really talk about in this video. I deep dive on actionable steps to stop wasting your time in that video on the screen. And secondly, how to create time for everything that you want to do. I talk a lot about how to create time for your goals and for the things that you want to achieve. That video is also going to be linked on the screen as well as in the description down below. I appreciate you so much and I will see you soon.